Hi everyone, welcome back to Crochet Tutorials. When I made these um, octagons on the video, um, I did say that I was going to join them in a very minimalistic method. Having said that, um, I thought it might actually be useful to show a couple of different joining methods because you've got a couple of different pieces that you need to attach with your octagons. Um, so we've got the little squares in the center and the triangles that hang out on the sides. Um, and there's a couple of joining methods that are really great for these kinds of things. So I thought I'd have a go and show you a couple of them. The first one is going to be the zigzag slip stitch. Okay, so for zigzag slip stitch, you do need a slip knot on your hook. And essentially, you need to go and start in a corner. I tend to start in a corner and try and find a stitch that corresponds with another stitch within that corner. So in my corners here, I've got three stitches. So I'm actually going to just go into the middle one. And with these slip stitches for joining, you do need to go into the top of the stitch all the time and just come through and just join on with a slip stitch and then hold your yarn in between your two pieces whatever you're doing whether it's a square or a octagon it doesn't matter and then come in through both loops of from the top through both loops of the corresponding stitch and just do a slip stitch in the next stitch, the very next stitch, again, go through both loops from the top and slip stitch through. And it's a little bit awkward. It can be a little bit awkward when you first start. But once you get some speed going up through, then it'll become a lot easier. And we're just going from side to side, going into the stitch from the top, grabbing the yarn, pulling through and slip stitching and then on the other side into the stitch from the top under both loops grabbing the yarn pulling through and slip stitching and just do that all the way up your octagon and it's only one side of the octagon at the moment because we're only just joining this one to here. If you don't keep your yarn between the two pieces, it'll be really hard to actually do that slip stitch. So just make sure it's between the two and slip stitch on alternate sides. And then you'll end up with this absolutely fantastic little zigzag slip stitch like that. I'll just zoom in on that. It's a fantastic join. And of course you could do that in any color, but it will still make a magnificent join, whatever it is you do. So I've just done that side. So I need to come over here, slip stitch. I'll just get up so I can get to the square because once we get to the with octagons in particular, um, because you have to insert that square piece between them, um, then you're kind of given a choice as to which way you need to go. And just do that first stitch. No, that's not what I want to do. <laughs> Don't do what I just did then. And that's my last stitch. So that's my last stitch on that side of those two octagons. Then I need to bring in Mr. Square. And when we do that, we need to decide, am I going to go left or am I going to go right? Um, it doesn't matter which way you go. Um, of course, if I've got another octagon here and I go right then of course I can just go across there and join there. Um, if I had another octagon here then I could go in that way and potentially oh just move this over so you can see what I'm talking about 
and then you'd actually also tackle that corner of the the edge with just the triangle here let me just zoom out oh no that was in <laughs> good grief anyway so but for now we need to tackle putting the square together so i'm going to leave this side i'm not going to do anything more with this side and i'm just going to start slip stitching into the square and again i want to start in a stitch in the corner and you can just go into the corner itself you don't have to go into the stitch and pull through the corner and then through the loop and complete your slip stitches up that side so now i'm out of the corner and i can go into my first stitch which is actually being a bit of a problem so i'll just put that straight in the corner and then into my next stitch on the square. And just doing exactly the same thing that we've done up the side of the octagon with going into the stitch and slip stitching. And then into the stitch on the other and slip stitching again. So you end up with this actually really fantastic kind of zigzaggy looking stitch. So that is how to join that and of course the same thing would happen once we get to the corner um, once we get to the corner then we would join our next octagon on of course you would then need to come in and do these other edges but that's always the way irrespective of what sort of um, stitch you're using to join so but we're always going into the stitch and then slip stitching and into the other side and slip stitching to make that zigzag so that is the zigzag slip stitch join Okay, so the flat slip stitch join is just about the same, but just done a little bit differently. In another video I have actually linked here, you can watch a video that is only the flat stip slip stitch join. Um, but it is the same as the zigzag, except you don't do the zigzag. So just attach with a slip, sti slip stitch. And then we're going to go that tail out of the way we're going to go into a stitch into both stitches every time i'm just going to join that one with a slip stitch so we're in the same position again the yarn is between the two pieces and that's really important because otherwise it makes it really difficult and you can go into both loops or you can just go into the back loop of your stitch and then go into the back loop of the other one but we're always doing that from the top and then slip stitch through them both so I'll just zoom in on that a little bit more so we're going into the back loop of that stitch keeping our yarn between the two pieces and then into the back loop of that stitch and always from the top not from the bottom and then just yarning over and slip stitching through both so into the back loop and the back loop yarning over and slip stitching through both and just the back loop of each stitch from each piece and yarning over and slip stitching through both and that actually makes 
this gorgeous flat slip stitch join and it is it's actually one of my favorites um which you'll probably see if you have a look at the other video it is a gorgeous kind of minimalistic very very flat very plain but very effective um slip stitch join and i actually think it's perfect for kind of everything so um but always into the back loop and if you do it in the back loop then the front loops kind of sit next to these um the slip stitches and it makes it even more flat so going to that one and that one and then i'm going to join my square so the same thing as with the zigzag slip stitch but because you've got these corners that are chained in your little square piece, you can choose to go into the full corner or just into that back loop. And it doesn't really matter, um, but I'm just going to go into the back loop. and then move on to the next stitch. It can be a little bit tricky when you add a new piece in, but you'll persevere, you'll get there. Um, there it is there. That's the stitch I want. And every time it's just from the top into the back loop, from the top into the back loop, yarn over and slip stitch. yarning oh, into the back loop, yarning over and slip stitching. And there we go. And it creates this absolutely gorgeous flat slip stitch join. And of course, when you come in, you can start here and cross over if you like or you may come in from another direction and just grab this but essentially all you would do when you join this to this that you've already done is just grab that one loop so you would just come in slip 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 and then grab that one loop with your three that you've got one from there, one from there, and one from there, and slip stitch through them all. So that is the flat slip stitch join. Next, we're going to do the single crochet join. And this one's, a, it's a lovely join. It does give you a ridge. So if you like that, then that's absolutely fantastic. To do that, you need your pieces with the right sides facing out. So you put them together with the wrong sides together let me just zoom out of that. So we've, there's the right sides of the pieces. So you put them together with the wrong sides together and locate your corners. And again, with a slip, slip knot on your hook, just go through both loops of a stitch in the corner and then go through both loops of the corresponding stitch on the other side. But make sure your yarn's in a position to actually be pulled through. So, and then just slip stitch. And then go back into that stitch or into both of those stitches like that where you just went and just single crochet. And then the next stitch under both loops and the next stitch on the other piece, single crochet. And then all you do is single crochet along. So it does give you a ridge. That's probably my only um, criticism about this method of joining, but it is super easy uh, because you are working on the right side of everything. 
and you can really see what you're doing. Um, plus, it's a obviously we're all fairly used to just doing a, a simple crochet stitch. So, um, I actually, I mean, it looks nice, but it does give a ridge. And if you don't want a ridge, um, then this isn't the, the join method for you. Of course, once you get back into this position, the corresponding place where you started. So you've started um, in the maybe the last stitch on the corner. So when you get into the last stitch on the corner which is this next one, then with the octagons, you need to introduce your other piece. Now this is simply, all you do is put that in a position that you're going to work on this side of that edge along here, and then this side of the edge will work on the other octagon but we're only working on one side at a time. So we're just gonna go into that next stitch and into the corner and single crochet. And it is as simple as that. And as long as you've got the right side facing out all the time, then you're in exactly the right position. And you just move along as you would if you were single crocheting. Again, just take that hook out. It does leave you a ridge. And it, as you can see there, it's, it's not a massive ridge, but it, it is a ridge. You can move it so it sits in the middle, um, but it is a ridge. And that is joining with single crochet. Our fourth join method for these octagons is actually another one of my favorites. It's just a simple whip stitch. So you just need some yarn on a needle. And in this case, you're actually going to work on the wrong side. So you need your right sides together and your wrong sides facing out. And then just the way you did with the single crochet, you're going to work under both loops of the stitch. And so find, go into one of the stitches in your corner and then find that corresponding stitch in your other piece and just whip stitch. Now a whip stitch is just a pretty simple stitch. You just go across and then back. And we're just going under both loops every time. Don't pull it too tight, uh, but just go into the next stitches. You don't want to pull this too tight because if you do, it'll kind of um, crumple everything up and try and maintain your consistency in tension with this. Otherwise, some of your square or whatever your blocks are, hexagons, octagons, squares, um, some of them will sit further apart than others. Um, but that is the case with any of the joining methods you use. So we're just going around and making this little stitch into each and every stitch along that side. And then of course, I'm getting to my corner so I'm going to need to introduce my square. Now this is the wrong side. This is the side that my whip stitch is on. So again, I want the wrong side of my square. And I'm just gonna pick that up. I'm gonna go this way. So I'm just gonna pick that up and go into the next stitch and into the corresponding place in the corner and just follow along that way. Of course, when I come back and do this section, I will just grab probably that stitch there um, to finish off that and to make sure that all three of those are joined. 
but this whip stitching is the absolutely easiest way to join any crochet items and you'll see as soon as I finish this and flip it over that it is the most minimalistic join method and it's the one that probably um, all your grandparents used for joining granny squares because it is the easiest and one of the quickest ways to join squares. So let's just have a look when we flip that over what that looks like. That You can see it is so minimalistic. It is actually just lovely. It's a wonderful joining method and, as I said, super easy. So you can, of course, when you get to the end, you just tie off the way you normally would, weave your end in the way you normally would weave an end in, and there, it's a join that is completely, well, almost completely invisible. So I do hope that these joining methods have been beneficial to you. Let me know in the comments which one you prefer. Um, I've got to say that I love the flat slip stitch um, and probably closely followed by this whip stitch method. But whatever you do, happy crochet and I will see you in the next video.